In a previous video, we discussed that the rate of a reaction is dependent on the concentration of one or more reactants. This relationship can be expressed mathematically as a rate law. For a general reaction where A forms some products, the rate law can be written as the rate equals a constant K times the concentration of A raised to some power N. The lowercase k is known as the rate constant for the reaction, and the exponent n indicates the reaction order with respect to the reactant A. Reaction orders, where the value of n, are usually small integer values such as 0, 1, or 2. When we have a reaction order that has a value of 0, we say that the reaction is zero order with respect to the reactant A. In these situations, the rate is independent of the concentration of A, and therefore, the rate will remain constant even if the concentration of A changes. If the value of N is 1, we say that the reaction is first order with respect to the reactant A. In this case, the rate is proportional to the concentration of A, and the rate slows as the reaction continues since the concentration of A will be decreasing. Value of N is 2, we say that the reaction is second order with respect to the reactant A. In this case, the rate is proportional to the square of the concentration of the reactant A, and the rate slows even more quickly since the concentration of A is decreased much more quickly as the reaction proceeds. So far, we've only talked about general reactions with a single reactant. But what if we want to work with a reaction that has multiple reactants? For the general reaction, A, A molecules plus B, B molecules produces C, C molecules and D, D molecules, the rate law can be written as the rate equals K concentration of A to the M power times the concentration of B to the N power. The M is the order with respect to reactant A, and the value of N is the order with respect to reactant B. The overall reaction order is the sum of the values of M and N. It's important to note that the value of M is not necessarily equal to the coefficient A in the general equation. At the same time, the value N is not necessarily equal to the value of the coefficient B in the general reaction. For example, for the reaction H2 plus I2 produces 2HI, the rate law is rate equals the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine. So in this case, M and N have values similar to the coefficients for hydrogen and iodine. However, in the second example reaction, we have two moles of hydrogen reacting with two moles of NO to produce one mole of N2 and two moles of water. The rate law for this reaction is rate equals K concentration of H2 to the first power times concentration of NO to the second power. In this reaction, the values for M and N are not identical to the values for the hydrogen and the NO reactant. The lesson is that in order to find the values of M and N for the rate law, these values must be experimentally determined. Let's take a few minutes to think about the rate constant K. We know that any time we have a rate, such as the rate of the reaction, it will always have units of molarity per second. However, because rate laws can have reactant coefficients raised to different powers, this means that the units of the rate constant K will change as the overall reaction order changes. If the sum of the reaction orders equals zero, then the rate constant K has units of molarity per second, which is the same as the rate. However, if the sum of the reaction orders 
where the overall reaction order is equal to 1, then the rate constant will have the units of seconds to the minus 1 power. You could also think of this as molarity to the 0 power times second to the minus 1 power. If the overall reaction order is 2, then the rate constant will have units of molarity to the minus 1 second to the minus 1. And if the overall reaction order is 3, then the rate constant has units of molarity to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. By now, you should be able to identify the order of a reaction if you're given the rate law for that same reaction. You should be able to understand the independence of the reactant coefficients and reaction orders. Finally, you should be able to identify the units for the rate constant if the overall reaction order is known.